second race of the fourth meeting of Super One this season is for Senior Rotax. Slightly embarrassing for Lewis Malian on the formation lap as he uh, pirouettes all his own work. I caught up with him earlier before the race started. First time here this, this year, I think. Uh, yeah, first time at Super One this year. Uh, first time at Clay Pigeon in oh, about eight years. Uh, so a decent result, I guess, that yesterday. Huh? Yeah, good result, yeah. We struggled a bit on Friday testing, uh, which was down to tyres. Uh, as soon as the tyres sort of played out and everyone was on the same tyre, we were at the front. So, yeah, good result. And this is a track that you like, you know pretty well? Uh, no, I've only ever been here once before. Um, but, yeah, the track's all right. A little bit short on the lap time, but a good fast track with some challenging corners. Yeah, 830 metres, this track. Yeah. I always think it looks bigger than that. I think Hooton Park something like 900 metres and I would think Hooton Park was shorter than this but it looks bigger than it is but as you say track times uh, what sort of lap times are you doing around here? Uh, 33, 34s Yeah so fairly, fairly quick lap times but plenty of overtaking? Uh, yeah loads of opp overtaking opportunities uh, pretty much every corner actually so yeah uh, it's good And what's your plans for the rest of the season? You, you intending to carry on? Uh, we don't really know we had a few issues at the Motorsport UK X30 Championships um, so we've given up on that we're going to focus on the road tax racing uh, and yeah hopefully carry on with the rest of the championship OK well good luck today Cheers thank you Well Lewis Malin there won the road tax 162 class yesterday in the grand final the winner of the 177 class on a split grid was Jack Tritton and I caught up with him earlier Jack, small grid of 177s here this weekend in with the senior road taxes but Small grids can sometimes be very competitive. Is that the case this weekend? Yeah, um, both finals were a very hard race. Final one, um, me and Darren were battling the whole race after I caught them up. Um, and then final two, the top three, were pushing each other around for the whole race. So although it was only a small grid, it was a very hard race. That was yesterday, of course, but today expecting the same. The conditions are slightly different, not quite as warm as yesterday. Uh, we're hoping to get the same. We're on a new cart, so we're, we're trying it, and I've only ever been here once. Um, so it's a bit new, but we will, we'll give it our best. We're still making changes and we're hoping um, we're improving. So, yeah, we'll, we'll try and get another win today. OK, good luck. Thank you. So time to talk you through the grid. George Smith is on the front row with Lewis Malin. Nobody saw that. Sam Harrison and Travis Coyne. Then Josh Taylor and Callum Smith. Thomas Parker and Kirsty Hockley. Sadly, non-starts for Lather and Collings. In 177, it's Tony Dickinson from Jack Tritton. Jamie Broderick from Darren Whaley. And as you can see, there is rain in the air and it's now starting to fall on the circuit. As we get ourselves ready for Senior Rotax and Rotax 177. Drivers getting off underway down the main straight, down towards the first corner. And that is Malin through into the lead as they slide through the first corner. Sam Harrison were on board with, oh, a little bit too close to George Smith, but managing to back off the throttle. But Malin in the very greasy wet conditions. You can see now just how tricky it is. He is now out in first position. And the 177s tippy toeing their way through the S. Is it a big slide? That was George Smith. Oh, and another, another spin. 72, Thomas Parker goes round as well. Oh dear, oh dear. So unfortunately, Josh Taylor, a little bit of a moment there, as well as Thomas Parker. And the 27 had a little bit of a slide, George Smith, but manages to get away with it. And you can see heavy drizzle. All the drivers, though, are on slick tyres and they are really struggling in the conditions. But round the outside comes George Smith as he tries to get through there on Lewis Malin. And Malin is going to hold the inside line. So Harrison is now trying to force his way on the inside of George Smith into the S's, but he can't get there. Look at the speed differential. Now let's have a look at the replay of the start. Look at that. That's Lewis Malin, at least a cart length. 0.153. In front of the pole man. Bear, now, bear in mind, in the last race, we saw uh, Magic Hemera. What, 36 thousandths 36 of a second? 36 thousandths of a second, get a five second penalty. And was investigated, and then obviously dealt the penalty. I haven't seen any investigation come up at all for this There's one. There's no investigation going on, but that, that was well, definitely a jump start. Baffling. Absolutely baffling. Well, unfortunately, that's something that needs to be investigated further in future meetings potentially because one of the biggest issues drivers have had in the past is consistency and unfortunately you know to err is human but it does come up perhaps once too often and drivers are going to need to bear in mind that you know there's only so much they can do on a racetrack they have to let some of it fall to the hands of the officials the 73 Darren Whaley has apparently been given a warning and that the, is for contact. Yes, Rotax 177 class, we've not seen it. He's out front in the 177. 
uh, bottom left of your screen, white numbers on blue plates, Rotax 162 class, the normal senior Rotax class, and the white numbers on green. And Darren Whaley is actually the race leader, so they yeah. must have thought that he's got into the lead by underhand means there. Didn't see it ourselves. Just look how tricky it is, even on the main straight. I mean, I know here at Clay Pigeon, the main straight isn't actually that straight, if we're honest. It's a big banana. It is a bit. but it's uh, a bit like uh, Red Lodge, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. But it's very tricky in terms of being able to get traction. Look, there's about three or four different racing lines. This is the battle for second place in uh, Rotax 177 in the midst of all of these guys battling away. Jack Tritton hanging on in front of Tony Dickinson and then Jamie Broderick trying to get his way up the order. There is Broderick trying to go the long way round on Dickinson. Now, normally in the Rotax 177s, there's a great battle on track. Oh, this, this is, is going to go round the outside for Whaley. Look at that! Talking about the uh, oh. difference between 177s and 162 class. Normally the 162 would be much quicker because there's a difference in weight, of course. 162 kilos versus 177. But in the rain, if you're heavier, it's actually an advantage. You've got more weight pressing the car down into the tarmac, effectively. In these slippy conditions, it can be an advantage to have a little bit more weight. And obviously, Darren Whaley showing that here. Why didn't I bring my race suit? Seriously, I could, <laughs> I could clean up in 177. Yeah. I'm heavier than all of them. Anyway, through the hairpin at uh, the Horseshoe, we're on board again with Sam Harrison as he chases after George Smith. And that is Lewis Malin still up the road. Only half a second in it, Mike, that we can barely see where we're going as they are sliding all over the place. The racing line changed about three times for each of the top three through that final corner. It is properly raining now as up the inside, Harrison tries again and slides into the side of George Smith. Now that was completely not Harrison's fault. Went for the move on the inside, but there's no traction on that inside line. He went for it, nudged George Smith, and that just puts Sam Harrison into a spin. Travis Coyne threw into third position. And to be fair, he just clipped the curb on the left-hand side, and that's where the grip is all the way around the outside. <laughs> Uh, that's true, actually. There's more grip on the outside where no tarmac is. Um, certainly, if you get co sort of concrete runoff areas, can be more grip when it's in conditions like well, that's this true, than, than otherwise. You've got the racing line in the dry conditions, all the rubbers laid down, and that mixes with the rain and causes a bit of an ice rink effect. So you're absolutely right. Staying off the racing line in these conditions is actually the better bet, although different drivers have different interpretations of it. Yeah, I was just saying that he clipped the kerb on the left-hand side as he came through the uh, left-hander. And then, to be fair, I think he was trying to back out of the move because he didn't want to take off the guy in front of him. And unfortunately, Sam has spun himself out and it's a long way back from there for the championship leader. Well, fortunately, in these conditions, he's only down to fourth, so he's only going to lose a couple of points. It's not going to be a massive hammer blow in terms of the championship. So he's actually, in these conditions, it's damage limitation as Tony Dickinson tries to hold off from Broderick and they've got Callum Smith in front of them causing a bit of a roadblock actually because he's a bit lighter and obviously this is the same uh, theory that we were talking about Rotax seniors oh nice move there from Broderick he gets the undercut on Tony Dickinson who overshoots into the horseshoe but we were saying the 177's heavier carts they're actually going to find a lot more traction and a lot more grip than the Rotax 162 mark yeah, so it certainly evens the playing field there's no doubt you know the weight's not so much of a difference in these conditions this is a great battle though between uh, Dickinson oh! and Jamie Broderick. Dickinson overshoots. Broderick is able to get the switch back underneath him. Now you can see there, Tony Dickinson is looking for the grip on the outside line. You can see there he went, he went wide in the first turn and then took a different line through the S's as well. And that's because you don't want to be turning where rubber is on the track. Anywhere there, where there's rubber on the track and then the water comes down, the rain comes down on top of it, settles on top of it. It's like walking on an ice rink. If you walked on there with a normal pair of shoes, it is slippery to say the least. So in karting generally, you see this in other forms of motorsport as well, you look for the line where there's the least amount of rubber on the track and that generally is off the racing line around the outside of the corner. Yeah, there are some drivers, of course, who are sticking to the regulation 830 metres around the circuit. Some are doing 845 as they go a little bit well, there's further the example wide. There with uh, George Smith taking that wide line through the turn. Now he comes in on, on the racing line and the 70 Travis Coyne goes wider. So the different lines they're taking there through that corner. So Smith at the moment, you would say he's sticking to the normal racing line. Travis Coyne, if you watch him, we'll have a watch if we follow them tends to be taking the wider line through the turn. I'd expect Coyne here to go right around the outside of the bend. 
Well, in fact, they've got they've taken the same line there. Now he's looking for a wider line through the middle of the turn. See, this is always fascinating to watch in these conditions. When it's not torrential rain, they're not kicking up the spray. There's not enough water on the circuit to go for wet tires. Yeah, in fact... And it's all about interpretation and confidence, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to bear in mind as well, these are on slicks in the rain. Even if you were on wets in the rain, you'd look for that wider line. But these are slicks in what is now definitely raining. So they're just trying to hold on to it. And uh, it can be so frustrating, though, if you've got somebody in front of you like this and you think you're on the right line and they take what you think is the wrong line, the racing line, and they still seem to pull an extra few cart legs Absolutely. over you. It's really frustrating. And the, and the thing is, that line changes lap to lap. This is actually closer to the ethos of powerboat racing when you've got the different waves and the race circuit changes lap to lap. This is a very similar sort of complex where the line was very strong on one lap as George Smith finds a little bit of grass tracking through the first part of the S's where the racing line was the first lap around the circuit. On the second lap, it's going to be completely different and you have to kind of feel your way around the circuit as you're in the braking zone, as you're blending back on the power. Yeah, they definitely took a different line there. You see they're taking different lines again, so... Fascinating to watch. Tra Always yeah, is. Travis Coyne just looking for a way past, basically. He's looking for something different. See what the man in front does. You try and do something different, see if you can find some grip. See, every time I've done charity or you know arrive and drive karting with people these are the conditions i love the best as whaley gets into fourth overall he sweeps past sam harrison again the 177 he's got a few more kilos to the car it gives you that little bit more bite it gives you a little bit more confidence you can just throw the cart in a little bit more and the added downforce that you've got it just helps you get through that turn it helps you when you get back onto the power as well because the weight transfer actually assists you around the corner with more weight to add to the cart in the slippery conditions so darren whaley he's only 10 seconds away from the race leader but in these conditions on this track that is good enough for fourth overall as he continues to battle away Lewis Malin with a six-second lead, Jake. Huge lead for Lewis Malin. Yep, massive. He's doing an absolutely terrific and, job. And interestingly as well, think about this. We know he's not under investigation, but even if he was, right, 5.8 seconds now, if he maintained that lead with a five-second penalty, he'd still win the race. Very good point. So Lewis Malin out in front, looking likely to be the rightful winner, whatever circumstance. George Smith in second from Travis Coyne and the Rotax 177 leader, Darren Whaley, now in fourth position in front of Harrison. Broderick, who's up to second in 177. Then Dickinson, Callum Smith. Uh, Thomas Parker has got past Jack Tritton. I wonder if Tritton's got a problem. And uh, down there as well, yeah, Tritton appears to have... Uh, come off the circuit uh, he might be out of the race now Jack Tritton that's a real shame we haven't seen him elsewhere around the circuit but we'll have a look for him if there is an issue and up to 10th place now has come Kirsty Hockley who is still suffering the after effects of that off at Raura well, in fact worse than that Jake she actually broke her ribs again on Friday oh goodness so, and I can tell you now if you've had any sort of rib issue in a cart She's got to be pretty brave to get, even get in the car. I don't think she took part. I might be there wrong. she is. I'm not sure she took part. There she is in the earlier pre-final. I think she's just doing the final. But you've got to be brave to get in the car. She will be in excruciating pain. But she's she's so, showing some she's gumption. And she's still in there. That's the race leader trying to get his way by. I think he made it through. But, yeah, full credit to Kirsty Hockley, the Ravenel driver. She's got... To absolute stones of character there that's a, a real racing driver none of this namby pamby premier league tripping over each other's shoelaces exactly. she knows how to go racing yeah. even with an injury she is still going to push it real racers real warriors yeah. yeah i know what you mean about these <laughs> uh, premier league footballers we fall over when they just uh, on an on an unrelated little note, finger on an unrelated though i am actually enjoying the women's world cup because actually football is being played in mark it. baines That's... apparently is enjoying the women's yes world i cup. think he is um, i think he did say i'm going to mention it here on youtube i didn't say this mark said it right where women are concerned, the only cups they should be getting their hands on should be the ones in the sink. Oh, stop he it, Mark. said that on Facebook. Stop it, no, Mark. Don't blame me. <laughs> don't blame me. I'm Bainesy. just reporting what was said by Mark Baines. Right, Bainesy. You and I are going to take to task, mate. Right, Lewis Malin leading the race with half a minute to go. George Smith in second for Travis Coyne. Then Darren Whaley. They are getting the gap down to him, though. Darren Whaley was 10 seconds back. He's now only seven back from Lewis Malin. So the man on the move is actually Darren Whaley. He's charging his way forward, getting that gap down to Travis Coyne. 
He could get third overall here. He's got time to do it. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. As I said earlier, it can be a bit of an advantage if you've got that little bit of extra weight. Well, Malin crosses the line with three seconds on the board, so that's two laps to go. There is Whaley as he goes through. The 73 is there in behind Travis Coyne. He's got time to do this, and Travis Coyne is right in behind George Smith as Kirsty Hockley gets out of the way. He's in a different race, Jake, Darren Whaley, but I'll tell you now, Darren's the type of guy that he'll just want to get in front of these yeah, absolutely. guys. Absolutely. <laughs> He's got his hand in the air, so he get out of the way. He just wants to get in front of the guys in front of him, just to say, you know, oh, I beat those Rotax 162 boys. Well, that's it. I mean, this is, this is not just a race for the 177 victory anymore, is it? This is pride. This, yeah, is, exactly. this is a status. bit of ego. Yeah, absolutely. This is about status. I can beat them. I've got the cart to do it. I've got the track conditions to suit me. Lewis Malin into the last lap. Six seconds clear of Smith and Coyne. And Darren Whaley, well, he's got a hard task, to be fair. He's got to make up a second in the final lap if he wants to go for overall third. But Lewis Malin has taken this race by the throat and buried it to the ground, hasn't he? He's absolutely checked out in front. Sam Harrison, fastest lap of the race. That probably would have been in the closing stages as the rain has eased off a little bit. Yeah. But uh, Darren Whaley, obviously the fastest man in 177. He's right up there in the mix with the 162s. But out of the final turn, Lewis Malin has cantered to victory. He's really made this race his own. Fantastic job from Lewis Malin. Absolutely terrific. And the final corner between these two or three and it is Travis Coyne through! Oh my word! How close was that? Seven thousandths of a second, Jake. Let's look again as they came through. Seven thousandths. He's behind at this point, Travis Coyne. And by the oh, time he gets to the line, he's just in front by <laughs> seven thousandths. He was behind, a full car length behind with about 20 metres to go. Exceptional. Lewis Malin beats Travis Coyne in the end then rather than George Smith. Sam Harrison is fourth in Rotax. Insult added to injury for Kirsty Hockley post-race, excluded for a non-compliance in scrutineering. A real shame after a brave weekend. Darren Whaley is fourth overall and the winner in Rotax 177. Great job. Lewis, great weekend for you, but nearly not a great weekend. Just talk us through the start on that rolling lap. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, tricky conditions on slicks in the wet. Uh, had a bit of a moment facing the wrong way around all by myself. Quite embarrassing. Uh, but it all came good in the end. Who do you want to thank for your weekend? Uh, yeah, it all came good in the end, yeah. Uh, I'd like to thank my mechanic, Will, uh, Comp Car, uh, P1 Power for the great engines, uh, my parents and uh, my sponsor, Sabre Jetting. OK, well done. Cheers, thank you. A great weekend for Lewis Malin, his first in 2019. Sam Harrison is the championship leader, though, from Travis Coyne and Callum Smith, with Thomas Parker close in fourth and Kirsty Hockley still in contention in the top five. Hopefully she's back to full fitness for next time. Tony Dickinson is just two points ahead of Jack Tritton in 177 from Jamie Broderick, with Darren Whaley and Ewan Logan rounding out the top five. Next up here at Clay Pigeon, it's action from the Mini Rock final.